This episode of the Slipcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Uh, Mad Canadian will be in Cary, Ohio this Thursday during the BBQ and Bingo at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria from 4 to 7 o'clock. This Friday, we'll be up in Tiffin, Ohio, at the Superior Auto between 12 and 4 p.m. And this Saturday, you can get some good old dinner up at the Tiffin Brewery, located in, you guess it, Tiffin, Ohio, between 5 and 9 p.m. Be sure to check out his social media for more information on him and his food truck. McKinney Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based, premium, small-batch, roast-to-order, veteran-owned, hand-roasted, micro-batch-roasted company. Uh, they are based out of Toledo, more specifically Perrysburg. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA certified organic. Um, integrity is at the core of what they do when... You know, integrity is what you do when no one else is looking, and that's just when you do things right. And what else would you expect from a marine-owned business? They do their farmers right. They do their customers right. That's that's how you. They're, you know, when you're working with a coffee roaster, you're sort of working with a middleman. And when you have coffee, sometimes where those beans come from, if you do your research, sometimes come from some very ugly situations. And if you want to make sure you're contributing to a better world instead of a worse world. You want to make sure you're buying your coffee from a place that's buying their beans from a place that's doing things with integrity. And when you're buying from the Iron Bean Coffee Company, you know you're doing exactly that. So you can buy your very own new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. It's going to everybody. A ball is well. Team Chaos took a few lives this weekend. And so, so we'll, we'll let's not waste too much more time, Jared. Let's let's talk about all the national games here. Harvesting souls. Let's do this. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? Um, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading our chat, and it seems like you're being signed up for something. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I got. I got. I got to do what our what our uh, patrons want us to do. So. Oh, is that you confirming you're coming to the next Sloopcast meetup? Is that confirmation? Sure. On I microphone, on camera, are you confirming? I will do my best to be there. <laughs> that is not a confirmation. All right, Kyle, All right, uh, no time to waste, no time to waste. Let's get into the show. Uh, this is our collegiate chaos episode. Uh, this is where we review the week that was in college football. Uh, where would you like to start, Kyle? Uh, well, let's start with the bad news here. Bad weekend for Big Ten out of conference here. Um, we'll start off with Minnesota losing to Bowling Green. Minnesota, who I'll just say it, Ohio State's best win right now, losing to Bowling Green. <laughs> um, ow, I, I, I had not considered it from that standpoint yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And to, to make it worse, like bowling, like we're like, oh, Mac teams are bad, right? Like, that's just kind of how we think about it. Like Mac team equal bad. I don't know how many people know about the inter uh, standings or the, the the inner workings of the Mac. Um, and so if you want to know just how bad Bowling Green is from a Mac standpoint, I'll put it to you like this. Uh, Maryland beat Kent State this weekend, uh, 37 to 16. Kent State and Bowling Green play each other this weekend, and Kent State opened up as a 17-point favorite. Bowling Green 
is a seven p- 17 point dog to Kent State this upcoming weekend to give you an indication of uh, where Bowling Green stands even within the MAC. Yep. And probably the biggest game for the Big Ten here Wisconsin and Notre Dame. And yeah, just Wisconsin just laid a big old egg in this game. Here's my thing. I, I feel bad. I feel bad for Wisconsin because this score is in no way, not even a little bit indicative of how this game played out. Wisconsin could have won this game. Uh, I know it's real weird to say 41 to 13, but I, I don't have the stats. I don't even have like the scoring sum- summary in front of me and we don't need to spend time on it. But. Like two of those two of Notre Dame's touchdowns came by way of pick sixes when when Wisconsin was trying to drive the ball at the end of the game to get some desperation points. This was a close football game. Yeah, the, going into the fourth quarter. Yeah, going into the fourth quarter. It was tied 10 10. Yeah, it was tied 10 10. I think it was. Was it? Yeah, it, it's. It's just so weird and it's so unfortunate for Wisconsin because they fall completely out of the rankings for anyone who doesn't pay attention for anyone who goes back. You know, when we're all talking playoffs and someone looks back on this game and just sees the score, they'll think Notre Dame killed Wisconsin. And no, they didn't. And it's it's very unfortunate. Some stats here. Wisconsin had three hundred and fifteen total yards. Notre Dame, two forty eight. Notre Dame had a kick return for a touchdown and two defensive touchdowns. And, and that says a lot right there with Mertz. We thought Mertz yeah. two years ago, he, he just had a great, he just had a great first year at Wisconsin and is just plummeted now. Just complete, just did, nosedive now. Did, 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 did he have a good first year? For this game. Did he have a, What's that? did he have a good first year at Wisconsin? Compared to his last two, yeah. But yeah, as you as you said, they How, isn't Notre he Dame only played two? two. Am I confused? I might be confused. Twenty twenty was weird, Kyle. I don't blame you if you've extended it into multiple things. Oh, someone someone just got the ref bot. <laughs> got the ref bot in the live no, in the he, live chat. No, he he did play in two thousand nineteen, just not that many games. Okay, either way. Yeah, it's just for the year right now, one touchdown, six interceptions All right, for the hey, year. Hey, Kyle, we need we need to bring up the we need to bring up the thing. Hold on. All right. We need to I don't do want to this. spend too I much time to do on that. this. Don't want to spend don't want to spend too much more time on this as we have a lot of games to get to. But either way, um I'm pulling this up here. So I gotta I gotta do this. So where do we have Notre Dame currently? I think B continues to be fine for them, but I do think we I and I actually think C continues to be fine for Wisconsin. I really don't feel like. This game, the final score indicates where Wisconsin is as a team, I think both I think they're both fine at B and C. I do think we have to drop Minnesota, though. Yeah, Minnesota, wherever you have them, you just drop them to D wherever they're at. You just drop them to B. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, let's see here. Northwestern takes care of business. Penn State beats Villanova. Mitch Maryland beats Kent State. Iowa struggling to Colorado State, but Iowa gets the win 24 to 14. You want to keep Iowa at A still? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine with that. Lo- right. Dude, lo- look at the teams in A right now. No, I, no one's great yeah. in there. They're all flawed. Yep. All right. Uh, Michigan. Outlasting Rutgers 20 to 13. So now we have to play the game. Is Rutgers better than we thought? Is is Michigan not as good as we thought? Um I it's probably a little bit of both. Um yeah. Honestly, wherever you have them, I just keep them there. Yeah, I don't I don't plan on moving either of these teams based off of this result. They're they're both in C tier. They can stay there. All right. Purdue just not good. Illinois, worse. But that was just, just such a low score game, 13 to nine in that game. So, yeah, wherever you have them, I just keep them at what I think you have Illinois, probably E or F there. 
Illinois F. Purdue is D. I don't know if, if Purdue continues looking the way they are, they, they may go to E, but. Yeah, they probably will end up there eventually, but we don't need to move them right now. Um, Sparty, Sparty in overtime takes out Nebraska. This was Michigan State. This was this was definitely a game that man. It's I don't know what to think of Michigan State. Like they had, they're undefeated still. They're undefeated, and they and they beat Miami just a couple of games ago. But man, they just I but, still don't know what to think of. Michigan but State. but how much how much stock do we continue to put into that Miami game though? But this is true. We'll get into that here in a little bit. So I think. Just because they are still undefeated, I think you still have to keep them at B. I think keep them at B. Yeah, uh, and, and then that's fine for now. I, I I'm okay and with then that. The last, last one, Indiana escaping Western Kentucky, thirty-three to thirty-one. Yeah, it's, again, it is what it is. I think kind of similar, like Purdue. If they continue doing this, it might have to drop Indiana. But man, yeah, Indiana just been a big disappointment. I thought that they'd be better this year. All right, so that's the that's the Big Ten here. Uh, definitely not a great weekend for Big Ten uh, as we get into uh, more the the meat of the Big Ten uh, conference games here. So yeah, definitely definitely not a good way to end end week four here. So, so moving into like the to national start? scope. Um, Georgia just dismantled Vanderbilt. It was 62 to nothing, and it was somehow worse than that. Uh, half of yes. those points by Georgia were, were scored in the first quarter. This was Georgia taking their foot off of the accelerator. They continue to be an S tier team to me. And it's not that like, oh, Vandy's actually good because not Vandy's a very bad They're Vandy w- couldn't win the Sun Belt right now. Um, so it's not like it's not like Vanderbilt's good. But they did exactly what you're supposed to do to a bad team, which was humiliate them. Um, and we also really have to start rethinking Georgia as a national player, because like we we're thinking of them as like a the for sure number two team. And we are basing that a lot off of like them completely shutting down Clemson's offense. But as it turns out, completely shutting down <laughs> Clemson's offense isn't that much of an achievement, as, as we uh, are now aware of. Um, but I, I not by no means going to move Georgia out of the S tier for now. Um, just real quick, Bama played nobody and did what you're supposed to do against nobody. They'll remain in S tier. Oregon had a good game. They'll remain in S tier. So I, I, I don't think we have any changes there. And for what that's worth, I also don't think, Kyle, we're going to move anyone new into S tier. Nope. They're going to keep them there. I think the top three is the top three there. I agree. All right, let's move on to the list here, the A tier. Oh boy, Jerry. Speaking of Clemson. Clemson, Clemson. Clemsoning is back. I don't know if this technically qualifies as Clemsoning, but I uh, it's 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 bad. It's bad. It's that's all it is. Yeah. Man, I gotta I gotta pull up the final stats, but yeah, it, and I I I told you, Jared, like I thought North Carolina had a North Carolina State, that is, has a pretty decent, I'm not saying they have a a really good defense, but they have a decent defense and they shut down Clemson, which you just mentioned actually is so did Georgia isn't Tech. That difficult. But so did Georgia Tech. Yeah. So but so did Georgia. So I'm I'm pulling up the team stats here. So Clemson here had you you want to get you want to guess how many yards Clemson had in this game? How many? 214. Yeah, and it should be noted that 21 in that final score, one of those was an overtime touchdowns. Man. Well, we have a fuck you Dabo request from Nomad in the chat. I've 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 completed mine. Kyle, would you like to contribute? Sure, yes. Uh, with the F U C C. Uh let's see. Clemson. (laughs) Clemson. We had him in A tier. I say we plummet them all the way to C. We put them all to see their offense is just bad. Their, their offense, their offensive line is what's killing them right now. Um, court, their quarterback is just uh, DJ is just not comfortable back there. They can't establish the running game. Yeah. I put them all the way to see right now. A 
one of the best defenses there, but your defense is just going to get tired and worn out if they're constantly all in the field. And injured. And I mean, North, North Carolina muscles. State had the ball. North Carolina State had the ball for almost 42 minutes. 42 to 18. I don't care what kind of defense you have. That's a long time to be out there. Kyle, can, can I put in a request? Can we move Notre Dame up into the A tier? If for no other reason than to have an A versus A next week when they play Cincinnati. Sure. Fine. Whatever. Just, just all right. Uh, let's see. Oklahoma, Jared. Oklahoma. Yeah. Barely win against West Virginia. They continue to be a turnover machine. They're insanely, insanely flawed. I don't want to move them out of A tier quite yet, but they're not going to survive their schedule. Um, West Virginia just stabbed themselves in the foot. They they had the ball and they were driving like, oh, they're going to be able to possibly kick a field goal to win the game and a costly um, bad snap and go back 20, 25 yards, put them out of range and Oklahoma able to do what they need to do to kick a field goal to win the game. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're on, they're on. Yeah. Just keep an eye on Oklahoma, but yeah, they're, they're very close to getting out of that A tier there. Uh, Cincinnati. Uh, I don't, I don't think they played play. this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So they stay put. I've talked about Iowa already. Uh, Ohio Penn state, state. doesn't. Oh, I say it doesn't move. They played a, a bad Mac team. Penn State, Penn State could have doesn't... looked better against Villanova, but who cares? Um, Florida jumped Ohio State in the AP this because they beat Tennessee and Tennessee is terrible. Like, I don't get that, but I also don't care about the AP that much. So I'm not going to spend too much it, time it worrying about it. And it might it might have been just because Minnesota lost, too. So, yeah, but they jumped Ohio State. Was yeah. Florida already ahead of All Ohio right. State? I don't think they were. No, they weren't. All right. We talked about Sparty already. Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Did I, were they also off this week? I believe they were. Uh, yep, they were. Yep. So they can stay where they're at. Um, UNC. Uh, Lost again. <laughs> oh, boy. We drop. We drop this them. This is down. deep chaos you number two. Them, yep. You want to drop them two levels here, or do you want to put them at C? Just because they they do have a really good offense, but they've just been so inconsistent this year. So maybe, yeah, maybe keep them at C. But man, they're they're float they're floating there at the ed- edge of C. All right, Kyle. It's time to ask the question: Is the ACC dead in regards to the playoffs? Who's left? Wake Who's Forest. Left in the AC- Oh boy. Yeah. If it's Wake Forest is the only one. Yeah. They're the only undefeated team. The Hokies? No. No. Okay. No. Wake Forest. No. I, 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 think, I think the ACC at this point is. God, we don't even have Wake a, Forest. We've never even introduced Wake Forest into the chart. <laughs> so well, we have to do it now. It's that's they're the last C, hope of the ACC. Put them in C. Put them in C. All right. Iowa State also falls to Team Chaos this weekend. They're so now unrated. Baylor. But I put them in C. C's going to get really crowded, but I put them in C there. C's C is going to get real freaking crowded. Oh, oh boy. Should we move I, Arkansas I wanna, after that? I think you might want to. So Arkansas, I think you move them up to B and then just swap Texas A&M to C there. I agree. But yeah, let's let's spend at least a moment on this. Texas A&M gets their first loss of the year. Um, I'm not buy, I'm not buying into. Oh, Arkansas is good. Every, I'm not buying into it. I don't care. Um, I think they have some big games coming up here soon. We'll find out, but no, I'm not buying into this Arkansas hype at all. Um, nope. Not buying into Me it. Either. All right. Before going into the C tier, Jared, let's do a quick ad read. And why don't we hear from the Iron Bean Coffee Company? Sure thing. 
Uh, I promised on the Monday episode that on the Tuesday episode, I was going to talk a bit um, about the flavored coffees. So I'm going to do exactly that. Uh, we have the Dylan's Grog. I think everyone knows what a grog is by now. It's one of the more uh, famous coffee blends you, you can get out there. Um, it has butterscotch and rum and vanilla. Um, again, it's it's an excellent coffee. Most places have a grog type flavored coffee. Uh, the uh, But this one's going to be the best because it's fresh roasted and does all those wonderful things the Iron Bean does, right? Uh, there's the intense blueberry, you know, uh, mom's carrot cake, a mint chocolate chip. You guys all know what those probably taste like. You, you're not stupid. I don't need to explain it to you. Um, and then there's the unicorn, which you don't know. It's a flavored coffee, but what kind? You don't know. Uh, so those are the standard iron bean flavored coffees. But Kyle, let's take a trip into the back room and check out some of the murder coffees. This is their uh, sister brand, the Murder Coffee Company. Uh, they have some additional flavored coffees, including the Cereal Killer, which is a vanilla buttercream, the Blood Bath, which is a red velvet flavored coffee, uh, the Turning Blue, which is a blueberry cinnamon crumble flavored coffee. And then there's the Solace, which is a ginger snap. So on Monday, I talked about a bunch of the non flavored coffees. There's a big lineup of flavored coffees, if that's more your thing. And um, yeah, that's that's. Again, if, if you want to check out all these coffees for yourself, you can just head over, check them out for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com. It's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mankini and Barbecue Company. At the top of the show, I told you where he's going to, but let me let me go ahead and read some more uh, reviews from actual customers that have gone and got some of that delicious um, Mad Canadian food truck food. Uh, we have a we have one here that says pulled pork was lean and delicious. Chicken coleslaw and dill potato salad were homemade and was great. Definitely will he, he eat here again. And we have another one here saying tried all the food here today for the first time. Really glad I did. The sliced brisket sandwich was one of the best I've had in Ohio. Pulled pork was really good as well. Can't wait to return and try more of their food. If you're, if you're not sure f about from these reviews, go check it. Go go try it yourself. McKinney will be in Cary this Thursday, four to seven, at Tiffin this Friday from noon to four, and this Saturday in Tiffin as well from five to nine. Be sure to check out his social medias for more information about the Med Canadian food trucks. Med Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. All right, Kyle. Quick right, thought uh, while I was while you were doing. Okay, you go ahead. I was going to say one thing here, because um, we totally missed about Baylor. Where do we put Baylor here? They are technically ranked now. I suppose we should introduce them to the chart. Um, put, them at, put them at D for now. Uh, I mean, they're rated. Maybe we should put them in at least C. C, it's really crowded here. It is crowded. Well, and I want, should we take a quick look at C and decide if any of them oh. belong up in B? Um, I hate to say it. I'm going to get some hate for this. I think it's time we bump Michigan up to a B. Um, Indiana doesn't deserve it. Maryland does not deserve it. Rutgers, Maryland's on the verge of going to D. What's that? Maryland's on the verge of going D, in my opinion. Yeah, um, that's that's fair. Should we move maybe Coastal Carolina up? They continue to win. I'm not super in on the hype, but it's not like all the teams in B are all that great anyway. I guess for right now. For right How now. about BYU? Yeah. I think I think you keep BYU where they're at. They struggled against South Florida this weekend, so I, I keep them at C. West Virginia West had a Virginia, good show against Oklahoma. You want to bump them up to them a B? C. No, keep them at C. No. I agree. Uh, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Tech. I, I have no desire to move Virginia Tech up. Um, UCLA, I don't really have much of a desire to move UCLA up. Um, what about anyone? Guys, anyone in the chat, do you see anyone who should be in B, in your opinion, but isn't? I don't think so. I don't think so. 
Uh, Brawley says UCLA, but I think he's been on that UCLA train all year, so I think he might be a tad bit biased. <laughs> all right. Maybe next week, but as of for right now, I keep North Carolina where they're at here. Okay. Well, we, we emptied out C a tad bit there. Yeah. All right. D here. Texas. By the Texas way, we got a couple UCLA's to be. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give the chat a bone here. Yep. All right. All right. Texas, Jared. Texas defeats Texas, bad Texas Tech team 70 to 35. Should they go up to C or keep them at D? Why? Because they beat Texas Tech? Hold on, let me do a thing real Purdue. quick. Texas Tech E tier. There. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh Purdue, they say where they're at. Auburn. Auburn, Auburn, who barely, barely beat out Georgia State. I I get, keep them at the D tier as well. I, I, should we move them down? They barely beat Georgia State. Keep them at D. All right. right now. I'd keep it that deep right now. Now, someone you can move down lost to Oregon State, USC. Yeah, losing to Oregon State should get you probably, probably just auto effed. Maybe not yeah, though. The, 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 pro, the program is really bad right now. It's it's a it's a bad bad program right now. It's yeah. Miami moving on. Miami, Jared. What would Miami do? Um, beat Central Connecticut uh, 69 to nothing. I Whatever, Central. Move on. We're done here. All right. Stanford, who lost to UCLA this weekend. They should have. Uh, That's fine. Arizona State. Arizona, Arizona State, who beat Colorado 35 to 13. Keep them where they're at. Uh, I don't. Did LSU play this weekend? I don't know if they did or not. I don't think they did. Nope, they did. They beat um, Mississippi State twenty-eight to twenty-five. Keep them, keep them at D there. Yeah, um, you're not impressing me with a win over Mississippi State. Nope. Uh, Memphis, Memphis lost to T. Excuse me, to UTSA. Uh, Kyle, we need to get a UTSA on in the chart. I don't even have them on the chart yet. Um, but D uh, is I'm fine. I, I don't. Maybe I should move him to E, but honestly, like, I don't have room. <laughs> um, Louis, Louisville, who's one of the top teams in the ACC right now, who who beat Florida State thirty-one to twenty-three. You move them up to C. Sure, why not? Screw it. All right, Minnesota. You keep the keep Minnesota at D. You keep them at D with that. Mentioned them uh, earlier. All right, uh, lightning, lightning round, real quick here, Jared. B tier. Uh, anybody you think should should move up or down here? Real quick, Boston College. We've never entered Boston College into the chart. I think we probably should, especially considering they play Clemson this weekend. Um, I think they belong in the C tier. Sure, put them in the C tier. I think are they? I think they're undefeated, right? No, no, they're not. No. They, uh, yeah, they are. They are yeah. undefeated. Yeah, good for them. They are. Yeah. Uh, Virginia lost, um, Virginia lost to Wake Forest. That's fine. Uh, they should have. Let's see. Northwestern, keep them there. Uh, Mississippi, keep them there. What about NC State? You want to move NC State up to D? Yeah. You knock off Clemson. You can move up to a D tier. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee, keep them there. Colorado. I'm almost tempted to put Colorado to F tier. Um, You have to really earn F. Nebraska. Stays where they're at. You know, don't maybe you want to move them up to a D tier. Took Michigan State to overtime. <sighs> ah, okay. That 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 size says no. Moving forward, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it. Utah beats Washington State. They can stay where they're at. Uh, Pitt. I think Pitt should be moved up. Pitt. Fine. I don't agree, but fine. <laughs> uh, well, everyone in the chat agrees with you, so I'll take the L on that one. Okay, uh, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech couldn't even beat a shitty Clemson team. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kentucky. I don't even know. Did Kentucky do anything? 
Uh, not yep. not they beat South Car- yeah. they beat South Carolina 16 to 10. Yeah, not whatever. Good. Uh do we do we even have um South Carolina? No, we don't even have South Carolina. South Carolina puts them in F. I put that's this, fine. It's a bad team. South Carolina is bad, bad. Missouri. Yeah, UK mm-hmm. is four and O, oh, but who have they who what's their best win? Nomad, what's their best win? Yeah, who? I, I don't. ECU? They're, they're bad. South Carolina's best win is ECU. Tra- oh, we can move. I mean, let's, let's not pretend like it's that hard to okay. move up to D. So, okay, we'll move them up. We'll move them up. They are four now. All right, Missouri, keep them there. Um, who's left there? I'm having a hard time reading. Tulsa? They can stay at E. Yep. UCF stays can there. stay there. Uh, I don't want to spend time on it. Texas Tech is fine here. Um, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma, we should move them up. Maybe up to D. I'll move them up to D. All right. I, I still think they're garbage, but they're they're ranked. They're undefeated. Um, they just haven't played anyone. Uh, what about Oregon State in the F tier? Do they move up to E now? Now that they beat USC? No. Uh, didn't they lose to an FCS school earlier this year? I think so. I think that's why. I think no, that's why we put them there. You lose to an FCS school, you live in F for the rest of the year. It's just that simple. What about Washington? What about Washington? Didn't they lost to an FCS school? They that, that's simple. You lose to an FCS school, you live in F for the rest of the year. I there that's that's a hard and fast rule. I will not move off of it. All right. All right. Kansas stays there. They got obliterated um by Duke and Vanderbilt stays where they're at. And USC stays where they're at there. Uh how dare you call them USC? Yeah. yeah. How yeah. dare you? Yes, right. I know that's sorry. technically I'm correct, sorry, but how Trojan dare you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry, Trojan fans. I'll take that back. Anybody else you want to add to this list here? I isn't is Army still there? undefeated? Is that a thing? Is Stewart still Army. in the chat? He would know. He's not. They are. They beat. They beat Miami of Ohio twenty three to ten, which they are four and zero. Oh. We got to put them on the chart. They're four and zero. Oh. Sure. Where Where Nomad do you guys want them? I'm I'm gonna yeah. let the chat decide. Yeah. Nomad says E. Does any is anyone gonna disagree with that? Fine. You can put them at E there. All right. We're putting them at E. Um, and I, I don't I don't feel the need to add anyone else to the chart here. Um, how bad how bad is it that we haven't even mentioned TCU at all? Uh, the, not as bad as their after game incident. Did you see that? I heard. Yeah. I heard. All right, Jared. Although uh, to be just in case any SMU is at fault there. Just just so we're clear. It's not TCU's fault that Southern Methodists were acting like a bunch of dicks. Yeah. Uh, Uh, Southern gangland ass. Southern Methodists tried to plant a flag after the game. And but at least the guys at SMU had the balls to do it before all of the other team went to the locker room. And then of course a thing happened because of, of course, like of course a thing happened. All right, Jared, real quick. Here's some ask Luke cast questions. Nomad asks, uh, where, where will Scott Frost be a coordinator next year? I don't know, man. I do not know. It, it does not seem super likely that he's going to be the head coach at, um, at Nebraska, so I, I don't know where he ends up. Maybe he, he's going to take his uh, early term money and, and take a year off. Probably big question that's going around for a number of years, especially this year is no different. Buckeye Zach, why is the SEC constantly the darling of the national media when the conference really only has one national powerhouse, well, two this year, and a second secondary decent team? How is Arkansas even the top 10? And, and what has Texas A&M done before their loss 
besides look terrible. It just it's, it turns one the the leader in narrative is ESPN. ESPN is in a financial relationship with the SEC. These are facts. Um, then it just sort of becomes like this echo chamber of like, well. Arkansas beat Texas A&M, who was highly rated. Therefore, Arkansas must be good. But then that asks the question, well, should Texas A&M had this is. This is why preseason polls should <laughs> be outlawed, because it creates false narratives of like, well, why was Texas A&M considered good? Well, because they beat Texas. But why was Texas considered good? They shouldn't have been. And, you know, it's it's like I said earlier with Georgia and Clemson, and it's it's not Georgia's fault that Clemson's terrible this year. They they went out of their way to schedule a really great out of conference game. Props to Georgia. Absolute props to Georgia for doing that. But the fact of the matter is we looked at that game and said, oh, my God, Georgia's defense is impenetrable. But then Clemson's offense, it turns out, can't score more than 14 points in regulation against NC State or Georgia Tech either. You know what I mean? So it turns into this circle, this circling, draining bowl of assumptions. That's why. Yep. Uh, Buckeye Zach also asks, could Arkansas Subjective surprise us all? Subjective preconceptions, as Nomad yeah. said, which is... A great way to surmise. Could Arkansas what I just surprise said. us all and break out of the SEC East as crown champion? Sorry, I missed that. What was I, it? Could Arkansas surprise us all and break out of the SEC East as crown champion? I am. Um, Arkansas is in the SEC East. <laughs> I thought they were in the West. Uh, yeah, no, they, they're they're in the West there, so. So no. no, 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 they aren't that I it's all good, Buckeye Zach. It's all good. Um, But either way, no, I, I'm not buying into the Arkansas hype. They have a really good quarterback that takes you a really long way in college football. Um, That's fine. They'll they'll do fine, but they're not decrowning Bama. Mm -hmm. It does the chaos make this year's college football season so much better. Oh, yeah. I, I love a good chaos ridden year. It's yeah, because it's, it's, one of the things a lot of people are getting tired of. Oh, it's the same four or five teams every year. Maybe we'll have three or four of those teams <laughs> this year. But I mean, you had Ohio State lose Clemson. It, Clemson does. Gone. They're out. They're out. They 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 lost their second life. They're they're out right now. They even even one loss Clemson would have been tough with their schedule, easy schedule that they have. So yeah, Clemson's done. So in comes Cincinnati, in comes Iowa, Penn Oregon. State, Notre Dame, Oregon. Yeah, it's, yeah, this this will be a fun October. By the this way, semi-related, Brawl, uh, Brawley just put a really great question in the live chat. Take, uh, take, any any, take any Ohio State fandom out of the conversation. Does Ohio State being down this year with other Big Ten teams appearing to get stronger benefit the Big Ten overall? Absolutely. 100%. Um, you don't necessarily want complete parity because you see what that's doing to the ACC right now. You see what that's done to the Pac-12 over the past, I don't know, decade. Um, you, you don't necessarily want complete. Well, they don't have parity in the Big 12. Oklahoma has been straight up dominating that conference for I don't know how long. It's not dissimilar to what's happening. Of course, it is dissimilar because the next tier down in the Big 12 is considerably worse than the next tier down in the Big 10. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 good for the if you take your Ohio State bias out of it, if we pretend like everything isn't all scarlet and gray behind me. Yeah, it's great for the conference that Ohio State's a little bit down. It's great that fans in Ann Arbor and the fans in Pennsylvania have hope right now. It's it's great for them. It's great for the Big Ten as a whole. Uh, it's great for Iowa. Um, 
Yeah, it's just, it's it's tremendous for the conference as an entertainment product as a whole. Mm -hmm. What well, one interesting thing here, um, talking about other teams in the Big Ten, Penn State, like Penn State's undefeated and they should be ranked high, but some of their great wins now, kind of like with um, with other teams too, it doesn't look all that great, but is Penn State as good as what they what they appear to be right now? Their best win, Auburn, doesn't really look as great as Auburn appears to be struggling. And then their win at Wisconsin looked great early on, and it doesn't look as great now too. Which again, keep an eye on keep keep an eye on Penn State. You talk about perception loops, like Wisconsin is actually a really good team. They hit a buzzsaw with a with a rising Penn State team and they played Notre Dame, who's a very good team and played them very close. But that final score is going to completely screw over the perception of who Wisconsin is. Wisconsin mm -hmm. is actually a pretty good team. And it, it's it, by the way, could still win the Big Ten West. They'll play Iowa, and if they beat Iowa, suddenly they're right back into contention for the Big Ten West. Like, the season's not over for Wisconsin. And they're so, yeah. so much better than that final score against Notre Dame. Yeah. Last tidbit here, Jared, and we'll, we'll end the episode here. Do you know... Do you, do you know who the uh, defensive coordinator is over at NC State? No, no, Buckeye Zach, because Notre Dame is out of conference. I'm sorry, not not the um, I'm sorry, not defensive quarter, the offensive coordinator at North Carolina State. You know who that is? Oh, I'm very aware. We don't need to talk about it. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, I think that's it. We're again over on time. I think we're, we're struggling to get that 30 minute mark here, but. We all know uh, 30 minutes in, yeah. was never going to be 30 minutes, but yeah, we, we need to end the show. All right. All right, Kyle. Um, everyone visit the sloopcast.com. Everyone come check out um, all the stuff. Just just uh, primarily the discord server as I continue to pull further and further away from Twitter and any other social media. We're hanging out in the discord server and yeah, we're having a we're having a shit ton of fun. I'm just going to say it. I'm just. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. We're having a whole lot of fun. So um, come come join us in the Discord server. Um, it's if you don't know, it's it's just a chat application in the same way that it's it's like a kind of like Slack. If you've ever used that, it's something along those lines. So, yeah, just come join us. Uh, all you have to do is download it to your phone. And the address is discord.thesloopcast.com. And that's it. That's that's the whole thing. So come come join us. Also, T-shirts. I'm wearing my 7071, one of my favorite 7071 T-shirts right now. It says Ohio beer only. You can go to 7071.thesloopcast.com to find our 7071 store. Um, and Kyle's wearing Kyle is is that T-shirt still available? He's wearing something from our merch.thesloopcast.com. I think Ohio State claimed that one. So if you find any of our T-shirts that you like on that store, you should probably go ahead and buy one because Ohio State just claims anything we put up, even if it says nothing about Ohio State or Buckeye football on it whatsoever. I know it says Buckeye, but they don't own the damn trees. So whatever. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Uh, former Buckeye, uh, Jamison Williams had himself a great game again, being against Southern Miss, but two kickoff return touchdowns and an 81 yard, uh, reception touchdown. So he had, he had four touches and three touchdowns in that game. Uh, looking like a real smart move on his part, transferring to Bama. Yep. All right. That's it, Jared. That's it. OK, uh, tonight's ending music uh, we brought to you by a band I've not yet played on this show. So that that's fun. Uh, they kind of have. Like a bit of an 80s tinge to them. Um, but it's also like a little bit industrial. It's definitely poppy, though. 
um, kind of feels like a, a, a dirtier, more modern version of an 80s synth pop song. If I'm if I'm just that that's as hard as I'm going to attempt to describe this. So uh, the name of the band is C.O.N. It's not con. It's C.O.N. Uh, the name of the song is Unafraid. And with all of that, <laughs> no, you're not about to get Rick rolled. I promise. Of course, me saying I promise just makes it sound like you are. You aren't. I promise. Why Rick Ashley is not from Ohio. That's how you know. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is C.O.N. Thank you.